multiplied to each and every one of you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We do give God glory and honor and praise for this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, yes, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are here to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that is due to him because he has been good. Yes. Like we love to say, God is good all the time and all the time, God is good. We do worship and praise and give God the glory and the honor because truly he is worthy <clears throat> to receive it all. Amen, amen. Anointing fall on me. Shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain 
shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May the Lord have a blessing. Amen. 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 We're going to ask Deacon Braxton, if he would, to come and give us our prayer this morning. Deacon Braxton, if you would come up here. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief he bears. Oh, what a privilege to take everything that God him bear. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. He's worthy of all the praise. There's none like him in all the heavens or on earth, oh, but he did. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We glorify you. We lift your name up. We give you the glory and honor for all you have done in our lives. We thank you for just waking us up this morning. You didn't have to do it, but you just woke us up just because you loved us. You put food on our table, clothes on our back, a roof over our head, transportation to go through and fro. What a mighty God you are, Lord. You gave us more than we ever needed, or ever we, we deserved, dear Lord. You look beyond all our faults and you meet our needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, we can't thank you enough for all you've done. You're worthy of all that we say to you. If we had tongues of 10,000 angels, we could never give you enough glory, never give you enough honor, never give you enough praise. That's how great you are. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Holy Spirit, we worship you and we glorify you and we welcome you into this service. We ask you to take complete control. Have our ears open, open our eyes and our mouths and our tongue and open our hearts, Lord, that we might be seen you in our hearts, dear Lord. For you are so all the things that we need on this earth. Sometimes we think we need this and we need that. But you know exactly what we need. You know if you gave us this and you gave us that, we wouldn't do that. We take our eyes off of those of you and put it on those things here. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We lift you up and we magnify your name. Hallelujah. You're so good to us, Lord. You've been better than we ever have been to ourselves, Lord. That's why we love you, Lord. Because you look beyond all our faults. And you meet all our needs, Lord. We thank you for looking beyond all these things that we have done in our lives. We know we have been failures in some parts of our life, but you look past all that. And you saw something in us that no one else saw that, Lord. And we thank you for seeing that. Lord. We thank you for your love that passes all understanding, Lord. We praise you, we glorify you, we lift you up. And we ask you to just have your way in this service today, Lord. Touch someone's hearts. Open up their ears that they might hear. Get my mouth that they might speak. Open up their eyes that they may see you, Lord. And give us all that we need in this service today. We ask you to bless our pastor right now. Touch him from the top of the head to the bottom of his feet, Lord. Anoint him, Lord, with a word to go forth there, Lord. That he would touch someone's heart. And they would turn him around and put their feet back on a solid ground. We ask you to touch the music ministry right now, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask you to touch Bishop right now, in Jesus' name. Give him a song in his heart, dear Lord, that he will lift you up and magnify you and draw people closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you the glory and honor right now. We thank you for what you're about to do. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. God's name be glorified. May he be honored in the earth and may he be honored with our life and our living. By way of today's announcements, just want to remind you to join us on Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. We should stand the time for our Tuesday Bible study yes. where we are in the midst of our study on the 11 types of prayer and we're right here talking about intercessory prayer still so join us as we're going through these various types of prayer and then you can join us on Thursday again at 12 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Wise Words with Wells a minister's mystery where we love to say where well, you can dine on spiritual food 
while you munch your lunch. And just have an opportunity and a time to listen to something that the Lord has placed on my heart. Bishop, I tried not to preach during it, but, but, but sometimes it just happens the way, where it happens, it happens. But it's just a, a little brief something, a little brief devotional time, because y'all know how quick that wells can be from time to time. So just a little brief devotional, just something that the Lord showed me and gave me to share. But we do give God glory and honor. Hey, homecoming is rapidly approaching. Amen. 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 Homecoming is rapidly approaching. Second Sunday in October, which is October the 10th, is our homecoming celebration where we're going to be worshiping and praising and giving God glory and honor and praise. Amen. Just want to remind the members and our friends that are going to participate in the sowing of the $200 seed for homecoming for the members of $200 and those of you who want to participate in that sharing and in that sowing of seeds. It's $200 this year. And we do thank and praise God for each and every one of you. 156 years. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. That's a long, long time. 156 years that this church has been in existence. And we do give God glory and praise for this church's longevity. And look, we're having, we're just calling out for those of you who would volunteer to help us to do those things that we need to do for this time, for our homecoming season. Just make sure that you let us know because we need volunteers to participate. I know it's slow coming for us to getting back into the groove of coming into church and worshiping and praising God here in the facility. But it's time for us to come on back in yeah, While we yeah. still have a chance because we don't know what next the CDC and right. them going to say. Amen. So it's time for us to share with each other and come together to worship and praise God. Amen. God is truly a good God. Yes, God is yes, truly yes, yes. a way making God. And God is truly a door opening God. Yes. Now it's time for us to sow into this ministry our seeds and our gifts of giving. Just want to remind those of you who are here and those that are joining us by the teleconference line and those that are joining us on Facebook that what we have, remember we also have our storehouse offering. Remember to participate in the storehouse offering. And also remember to participate in your tithes, your offering, and your gifts of giving here at Greater Christian Chapel Church. Of course, you can give by going to our church's website, which is greaterchristianchapel.org, greaterchristianchapel.org. There's information there on how to go in to PayPal and actually share with us in your giving through PayPal. But then you can also send it in via mail. You can send it in via mail to Greater Christian Chapel Church, Post Office Box 22, Apex, North Carolina, and our zip code is 27502. Again, that's Greater Christian Chapel Church, Post Office Box 22, Apex, North Carolina, and our zip code is 27502. And for those of you who are here in the service here, what you can do is as you are leaving, you know, the offering materials back there in the back. So as you are going, you can put your offering, your sowing of gifts and your tithes inside of the box and everything that's back there towards the back of the sanctuary. But we do thank and praise God for each and every one of you who have turned aside to join us on this day who thought it not robbery just to spend a little bit of time with us here at greater christian chapel church and online greater christian chapel church live and those that are joining us on the teleconference line we praise god for each and every one of you god is truly 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 a good god you know it's, it's amazing how that we can say like the the song says through it all Yes, yes. Do it all. Do it all. Yes. I've learned to depend upon his word. I've learned that I can trust him 
through it all in the midst of life's trials, in the midst of life's storms, in the midst of life's troubles, I have learned to trust in him. I have learned to lean on him. I have learned to depend on him. I've learned to do whatever it is that the Lord says do. If I don't have a friend in this whole wide world, I'm going to do what the Lord says do. God is truly a good God. God is a way making God and God is a door opening God. If you would, you can turn your Bibles to this passage of scripture. 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter, verses 9 through 10. 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter, verses 9 through 10. Why we didn't go to the passage that was read earlier is because that is a passage that is a proof text for the rest of what we're going to be doing with today's message. 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter, verses 9 through 10. It says, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. We're going to turn the service now into the hands of the Bishop Temple Rock. The Lord is good. Yes, he is. He's good all the time. Yes, he is. I've been given some instructions this morning. Sing a song with a little pep. Since I've been given those instructions, and don't look at the pastor because he didn't give that to me. <laughs> he just said sing a song. Right now, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell y'all who gave me the instructions. <laughs> but you're gonna have to help me sing this since I've been advised. It's an old song. And it says, You don't know, like I know, what the Lord has done for me. Is that alright? You won't have to sing it. Amen.
can. No, sir. What he's done for me. No, sir. He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet yes, on solid ground. That's what he's done for me. God is truly, is truly, is truly a good God. He's a way-making God. He is a door-opening God, and we do give him glory. We do give him honor, and we do give him praise. But as that passage scripture says, for he said Christ Jesus who has delivered us from the wrath to come. Let's look at that passage again. First Thessalonians, there at the first chapter, the 10th verse, it says this. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Let us pray. Merciful God in heaven, precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father God, we just thank and praise you for this day that you have so graciously given to us. And right now, Lord God, we just ask you to be here with us in a mighty and special way. We have entered into your gates with thanksgiving. We have entered into your courts with praise. We have been thankful unto you and we have blessed your name. And right now we are empty vessels, empty pitchers before a full and flowing fountain. Asking you to fill us from on our fill us, Lord God, until we want no more. Lord God, I just ask you to touch these, your people. Touch them with a spirit of understanding that they might listen both intentionally and intensely to the word that shall go forth this day. Not my word, but thy word. Not my will, but thy will be done in all the things I set my hands to do. Then, Father God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. These things we ask in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen, amen, and amen. You know, we are still right here in the midst of this series of sermons on end time solutions for end time issues. You know, we've gone through this and we started off this whole series by talking about something that Peter said in his epistle on how that seeing that all of these things shall be resolved. What manner of a person ought we to be? In all manner of holy communication and in all manner of godliness. What type of person ought we to be since Christ has said some things are going to take place? And if Christ has said it, that settles it. If he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Now I love how that he actually gave us a prophecy talking about when the temple and how that the temple was going to be destroyed and how that one brick right. would be left on another. It had not happened. It had not happened up to the time that he was crucified. But what happened in 70 AD? You had the Roman general who would be the future Emperor Titus came in and he destroyed the temple and not one brick was left upon another. What was Jesus doing? He was giving you verifiable historical something that was going to happen in history so you would know that everything else I'm about to tell you All right. yes, sir. is going to come true. Then he starts in with the signs. What did he say? He said, first of all, don't be deceived. Yeah, yeah. He said, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. Right. Right. Many shall come saying, I am. Yeah. Well, they're saying that they're saying, I'm God. Yeah. Or talk about how that, oh, you're looking for Christ, I'm Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, no, no, don't be deceived. Yeah. So it's going to be a time full of deception. And not only that, he said there would be wars and rumors of wars. And 
we know that there have been literally thousands of skirmishes, thousands of battles, nation rising up against nations, peoples rising up against people, all sorts of civil unrest, all sorts of racial unrest. Jesus said it was going to happen. Then he said there would be earthquakes in diverse places. And how I showed you that every day, hundreds of earthquakes take place on this planet. So much so that you have people asking, what is wrong with this planet? Why is it shaking so? Why is it shaking so? Because Jesus said, these are going to be signs of my return. Then he said that there would be pestilence. He said that there's going to be pestilences in diverse places, diseases in diverse places. And I told you how that the statistics is almost 90% of the people that die, die from some form of sickness, some form of disease. So what do you have? Jesus said these things are just signs of his return. Yes. Not only was that said, he said not only would that take place, there's going to be persecution against the church. He said there's going to be persecution against the true believers. No, 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 they they talk about things on the news, but you never hear about how that hundreds of thousands of people, Christians die in the world from martyrdom every single year. Oh, people don't understand. People don't see those things. Why? Because especially in this country, because we're living in the United States where supposedly you have religious freedoms. When really a lot of folks just want freedom. They want religious freedom, but they want freedom from religion. They want to do whatever it is that they want to do. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. That they want to have a mindset and a frame of thought that we're going to eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow, we might die. Uh But they don't realize, okay, tomorrow you're going to die. But you don't understand there's something that comes after that. What are you going to do in the hereafter? When this life is all over, what comes next. And then Jesus said, when you see these things beginning to happen, Mm -hmm. then he says, look up. up. Lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. It's closer now than when you first believed. Look up. I told you how that that word that's actually translated, look up means lift up the way that you live. Lift up your conversation. That scripture that talks about in Peter's holy conversation is talking about let them know and you live like you are a citizen of heaven. Uh-huh. No, no, no. This earth is not my home. No. I'm just passing through. Yes. No, 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 no. That's what no, I remember this one song that you sing on my way. Yeah. Trying to make a hundred. Yeah. Because 99 and a half, it just won't do. No, I, I like another, another one that they said was turned on, sold out, hooked on Jesus. And that's what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to be striving and doing our absolute best for the Lord. We're not going to make it all the time. But not, that's not supposed to stop us from at least trying. Amen, amen. At least striving, at least doing. And then last time that we were together, we started talking about certain things that Paul had to say. Paul said that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Yes, yes. Now, 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 this is something that I learned. This is something that you need to understand. In the epistles, always remember this. The epistles are written by believers to believers. So what he's doing, he's, he was actually giving a warning, letting us know the things that are going to
to happen. So basically he's telling us, number one, in the world you need to understand this is going to happen. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Yes. They shall be headed. They shall be high minded. They shall have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They shall be large and truth beggars. So they shall have this whole mindset that is not about God. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's their mindset, and that's their understanding. I'm going to put what I want before other people's desires. That's their mindset. But remember, he's letting us know how the world is going to be. Why is he doing that? Just like he said, when you see these things yeah. beginning to happen, yeah. look up. Yeah. Lift up your head because your redemption draws nigh. But if you understand something about Paul, in every single one of his epistles, he has something to say about that day. Mm -hmm. yeah. To encourage our lives and to lift us up. But something else he says to look out for in the world. He says, then shall that wicked be revealed. Mm -hmm. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. He's talking about the rise of the Antichrist. You know, antichrist is actually not only means against Christ and against what Christ stands for, but it also means to stand up as a substitute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, what the devil wants to do, he wants to take Christ's place. Yeah. He wants to be worshipped instead of Christ receiving the glory, the honor, and the praise. I'm going to tell you, but the scripture says there's only one mediator between God and man. Amen. And that's the man, Christ Jesus. Yes. The one who bled, who suffered, and who died on the cross for your sins. The one who rose up on the third day that you might be justified. The one that's right now at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you, standing up as your high priest, Christ Jesus. Yes. Who's going to come as the king of kings. Yes. And the Lord of lords. But you know. He not only talks about the things. That's going to happen in the world. But he lets the Christian. Let's the believer know. That there are things that you have to look out for too. Yes. You know. This is something that some of you might not be aware of. But just like there is a judgment for the sinner, mm -hmm. there's also one for the saint. Yes. 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 But before I tip that and touch bases and really try to dig that out a little further, what I want to do is I want to share with you that when you see these things happen, All right. he says, look up. Lift up your head. It's pointing to an event that we all have to prepare our hearts and our minds for. One day, Christ is going to come in the sky. Yes. Yes. And he's going to do like he says in Revelation, the fourth chapter, the first verse. It says, and there was a door open in heaven. And I heard a voice saying, come up here. Yeah. And what's going to happen is one day there's a bit that's going to happen called the rapture. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where the believer will be caught up to meet him in the air. Yeah. You know, I, I love it says caught up. There in that 17th verse of the fourth chapter of First Thessalonians. Why does it say caught up? You no, know, you hear some people say, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible. If you go in the Greek, there's a word that says caught up. The word is hapazio. Hapazio. What does that word mean? It means to be snatched up by force. It means to be taken up 
and take it away. Look, in Acts the 8th chapter, there when you have Philip is taken by the Spirit to meet the Ethiopian eunuch on the road, it said while they were speaking, after he got baptized, it said the Holy Spirit called him up. Same word, Arpasios. Paul said there in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, how that he was caught up into the third heaven and saw things that's not lost but for him on this side of glory to talk about. Same word, caught up. In Jude, Jude talks about how that we are as brands plucked from the fire. That word plucked from is the same word, hapazio, snatched out of the burning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you realize the enemy wants each and every one of us burnt up? Mm -hmm. But instead of getting burnt up, God wants us to be caught up. Amen. Instead of us being down and out, he wants us to lift up our heads because our redemption is drawing nigh. Instead of being full of fear, you have to remember God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of love and the power of a sound mind, we have to remember that we need to be elevated. We need to be elevated in our thinking. But the scripture lets us know that there is something called the Bema seat. The judgment seat of Christ. And it's a judgment seat for believers. It got quiet. Y'all said, but I thought that all I have to do is get saved. Oh, oh let, let, let me tell you this, let me tell you this. You know how that whenever you're trying to win something or, or to get something additional, to get something extra, they said that you have to do certain things to be eligible for. Okay, when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you became eligible for some stuff. But if you don't have Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not eligible for anything. Whatever judgment comes for you is your judgment because you don't have salvation to make you eligible for more. Y'all understand that? That's why it talks about there in 1 Corinthians, there in the 13th chapter, how that Christ has laid a foundation. And then what we build on that foundation, whether it is gold, silver, precious stones, Wood, hay, or stubble, everything shall be tried yes. by fire. Everything shall be tried by fire. If it burns up, that means it's not going to last the test of fire. You know what? No, I remember that the song that we used to sing, it says, and we shall wear a crown right. when it's all over. Yes, when it's all over. I shall see his face when it's all over. But I shall wear a crown. Y'all realize the scripture talks about those crowns? The first crown it talks about is called the crown of righteousness. That crown are for those that not only strive to know the word, but to also apply the word. Yeah. Then you have those that receive the crown of rejoicing. What's that? That's a soul winner's crown. Like the song says, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves. It's the crown of rejoicing. Then there is the crown of life. It's called a martyr's crown. But you know what? This crown, you don't have to just, you don't need to die to get it, necessarily. It's talking about your enduring trials. It's talking about your enduring troubles. It's talking about your enduring great tribulations and going through this life struggle. Abnormal struggles. Where it seems like when you step out of one fire, 
You're stepping into an even hotter fire. When you step up one ring of the ladder, and you only thought you had one step left, you look up and it looks like there are 10,000 steps left. You get one monkey off your back, and five more jumps on your back. You should be thanking God says, I'm going to endure like a good soldier. Because one day I shall wear a crown. Then there is the incorruptible crown. Lord have mercy, I wish I could just delve into the scriptures and show y'all what each one of those and go in greater detail on what each one of those are talking about. But the victor's crown is, this incorruptible crown is a victor's crown. Talking about those that ran the race. And ran the race until they got to the end of the race. They didn't yield and stop by the roadside where the devil threw up those things in life that they liked. Because the devil just wants you to stop. That's all the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to stop. The devil wants you to be rendered ineffective. The devil doesn't want you doing anything. And then what you end up having, that last crown is the crown of glory. They call that, Bishop, the pastor's crown. Mm. But I think it's more or less really a ministerial type crown. What I mean by ministerial, if you are a church worker and are doing those things faithfully. If you are a Sunday school teacher and doing those things faithfully. If you are a vacational, a vacation Bible school teacher and doing those things faithfully. If you are a deacon and you are doing those things faithfully. If you are a trustee and you are doing those things faithfully. If you are a choir member and you are doing those things faithfully. That in your heart, in your mind, you know according to scripture, those things are ministry. Mm -hmm. Well, you're touching the hearts of others. Lord, I'm sure that there are probably more crowns and more awards that you can get. No reward, more rewards that you can get. But those are the ones that the scriptures particularly point out. But you know, we have a God that's good. I, I know some of us just want to make it over. But I don't know about you, but at one point in the scripture in the book of Revelation, it talks about how the elders took off their crowns and laid them at Jesus' feet. Yes, I want to have something to give back. Yes, I want to not only hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want him to say, here you go with that. But ultimately, I just want to be able to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for how you made a way out of nowhere. Thank you, Lord, for how you turned my midnight into day. Thank you, Lord, when I was in pain, you held my hand. Thank you, Lord, when I was in struggle, you didn't leave me. Thank you, Lord, when I fell down, Lord God, you were still there encouraging me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul and making a thank you, Lord. For all that you have done. If I had a thousand tongues. If I had ten thousand tongues. If I had a voice that I could sing like the angels could sing. I could not praise you enough. For all that you have done for me. Oh, we serve a mighty good God. We serve a God that is worthy to receive the praise. A God that is so good that he brought us to this moment in time safely. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God, because you are so good. Thank you, God, because you are so kind. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to declare my thanks in the midst of the congregation. To those that want to hear it and those that don't, God is good. God is good. God is good. Amen, amen, amen. We 
thank and we praise God for all his many blessings that he has bestowed upon us. I hope I said something to encourage your hearts and your lives. May God richly bless and keep each and every one of you is our prayer. We still have a little bit ways further to go here in this service box. So I'm going to keep those that are joining us by way of teleconference to remain there while I release those that are joining us on Facebook. God is just so good. Yes. But remember this. Yes. All of these words have been said to prepare us, to motivate us, and to help to keep us sanctified and in him. May God richly bless and keep all of you. May heaven smile on you. And in all of your doing, do the will of the Father. And in all of your following, follow hard after Christ. Have an absolutely blessed day today in the Lord. May God bless those of you who have joined us by way of Facebook. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. No, God is a way-making God. God is a door-opening God. We do thank each and every one of you who have turned aside to join us this day during this day's worship service. We do give God glory and honor for all that our eyes have seen and our hearts have felt of his presence. And by way of reminder, we just want to remind each and every one of you to just continue to pray for each other. And remember, we're looking for volunteers for our homecoming. Amen? Amen. So make sure you volunteer. Church family, make sure you volunteer. And also, remember what uh, the, the homecoming dues, $200. And also remember each other. Just keep on praying for each other. That God will keep us safe. Because we are living in those times right before we are called up. We're living in those times right before we are called up. So we do magnify his name and we do give him glory. I'm going to ask if Brother W.T. would come at this time. Is Brother W.T. here? Hmm? Amen, amen. Sing, Brother W.T.
to share these with you all, and they'll be available for every church member and for our other congregants going forward. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay, okay. We do give God glory and honor and praise for all his many blessings. Let us stand together as we receive the benediction. together, Lord, to worship you as a family unit, Lord, and as your church. And right now, Lord God, we just ask you, Lord God, to continue to stand by us, lead us, and guide us. Wrap us up in your loving arms of care. Bring these things that we have heard this day to our remembrance, that it might be an encouragement to our heart, Lord, and keep us lifted up and fed for many days. And help us to be prepared, motivated, Lord God, and live the kind of life that would be pleasing to you in all holiness and sanctification. Right now, Lord God, just touch us as only you can. Bless us as only you can. Give us traveling mercies, Lord God, as we go back and forth to and fro, Lord God. Keep us from all hurt, harm, danger, any form of evil, illness, debilitating injury or any of its like, Lord Father. We place our lives firmly in your hand and ask you to preserve us until we can see you in peace one day. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, and present us faultless before his own glory with exceeding great joy. To the all-wise God, our Father, be glory, dominion, power, and honor, both now and forever. And all the church said, Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Have a blessed day. And all you're doing, do the will of the Father and all of your following our heart after Christ. Amen. Amen. Membership and that will all go toward the homecoming uh, celebration. Okay, we okay with that? Thank you.